Uh, once you reach that point, you're gonna confirm, which will be the three uh, collection of ships. Uh, yesterday we were doing a clandestine landing withdrawal, which is a means to uh, reconnaissance the beach and also to uh, to bring in a larger landing force. So we uh, we rehearsed that with the Filipino uh, Marsog guys. You know, the people that are threatening their way of life and their freedom are the same people that are threatening ours. So I'm extending. Uh, I'm extending the safety of my family by training them, by giving them the skills that I've, that I've honed. Uh, this is great training. We have a great working relationship with our U.S. Marine counterparts, and they treat us with dignity and respect. But you put two in, like one light there, so they come in straight. Got it? It's not good with uh, these. The thing is, our relationship out here isn't an instructor-student relationship. It's the, the truth of the matter is we're here to train ourselves yeah, and, and invite the Filipinos to join us, really just as extra personnel. So they're not students. They're, uh, they're brothers in arms, and, uh, and we're just enjoying the heck out of being with them. They got a lot to offer, and they're very, very smart, and uh, they have the ability to adapt. They've adapted to their terrain here and their culture here, and they, they quickly adapt to ours. Uh, and I think we're learning more from them than they are from us. Memorial Day is a time for Americans to honor their fallen heroes. Yay! Sailors and their families from Fleet Activity Sasebo chose to honor the fallen by participating in a workout called the Murph. It's named after Medal of Honor recipient Lieutenant Michael Murphy's own workout. Which consisted of a one mile run, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 squats, followed by another mile. All this being done with a 20 pound vest on. Chief Petty Officer Jacob Moore has organized this event for the past three years but he hasn't done it alone. Both his wife and daughter helped make the Murph happen. It was actually his wife who first introduced him to the workout through the CrossFit physical training program. I don't think he really had a choice. <laughs> we pretty much do everything together and uh, the CrossFit is one of those things, these type of workouts, once you do it, if you like to work out, it's pretty addicting. And Chief Moore still remembers how he felt during that first murder. The worst thing I've ever gone through in my whole life. Um, halfway through it, I'm not going to lie, I, I lost it. And uh, took my body armor off and threw it in a trash can. But because of what it is, I put it back on and finished it. Despite the pain of getting through the Murph, for Moore and his family, it's a small price to pay in order to pay tribute to Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice. Coming out here on Memorial Day and suffering a little bit, for those that did what they did for us, uh, I don't think of a better way of doing it. Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Sasebo, Japan. Did you know CFAST has an auto hobby shop? Just complete the safety course and gain access to a valuable resource. They have clinics to help you keep your car in great running condition. and you'll be able to save money on costly auto repairs. Get into the auto hobby shop. They're open four days a week. A training team from Surface Warfare Officer School, Learning Site Yokosuka, is teaching Fleet Activity Sasebo sailors how to deal with shipboard fires, a crucial skill for when the ship is underway. Uh, it's very important because when you're going out to sea, uh, you are the first responder. You have to put out the fires, nobody else other than yourself. Uh, so you have to be familiar with all the spaces around your ship and all the firefighting equipment. The instructors are teaching skills that can save lives when out to sea, but can be difficult to master. I use patience because it takes time to learn a few things, so I have to practice that. <laughs> if I can get students to learn how to combat fires, and be comfortable, then I feel like I've done my job. Teaching these skills requires a commitment to excellence, and these instructors demand it from their students. But they don't just hold their shipmates' feet to the fire. They step right in with them. Uh, well, you, you heard the students earlier where they were screaming and cheering as you see a ball of fire shooting out, and you know that they're in there fighting a fire, and the instructors are there helping the students, and you know, that that's, the, the best part of instructing is the students are enjoying themselves. I love being an instructor. Water off. Petty Officer Jeremy Gray. Oh, Sam, hold on to it. Need activities. Sasebo, Japan. 
Every year, people throughout Japan come together to honor the spirits of their ancestors in a celebration called Obon. In Sasebo, the local community pays tribute to their loved ones with candlelit lanterns that are sent down the Sasebo River. This year, sailors from Naval Beach Unit 7 volunteered to help the local community celebrate Obon. The community, of course, has given us so much. Uh, we work hand in hand with our Japanese counterparts, and uh, more so than seeing it, I, I look forward to participating in it. Just to share a part of my, uh, my wife's culture, because she too is Japanese. It's always important to you know, show our support to the host nation and everything. So, I mean, any opportunity that we have, you know, it's just, uh, it's always a pleasure to, to partake and, uh, you know, do our part for the local community. These sailors experienced Obon firsthand and gained a better appreciation for the meaning behind the festivities. I want to do something that's a part of Japanese culture. I'm living here. I like to be immersed inside of the uh, culture and I uh, just thought it'd be something good to do. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times uh, we forget about those that have passed on and uh, it's just good that they come out of remembrance and actually show some type of uh, uh, love and care for those who have passed. With a better understanding of their local culture, these sailors can continue to strengthen ties between the United States Navy and the people of Japan. Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Sasebo, Japan. Good morning, Captain. CSO, CMC. The Sasebo Chief Petty Officer Selectees conducted a 9-11 Remembrance and Flag Retirement Ceremony in honor of those lost on September 11, 2001. At 58 Flight 175 takes a heading towards New York City. For many service members, including some of these selectees, the events of that day are what led them toward military service. The red stands for all the men and women who have died in the service of our country. I was in my sophomore year of high school. I remember watching the planes hit in the Tower 2 while, we, well, while I was in history class. Um, immediately afterwards, I went to the recruiting office and tried to join, but I was too young. Uh, so I had to come back next year. I enrolled into the debt program, and then I left on my senior year. Local JROTC members helped the chief selectees with the flag retirement ceremony. They're too young to remember when 9-11 happened, but they recognize the importance of the memorial. To be part of the ceremony, it was an honor, but at the same time, I felt sad, but I know I should be happy. Uh, because it was a big part of American history and I felt like it should be recognized. As the last bell tolls, these sailors and their families will continue the legacy of honoring our flag and the memory of those lost 14 years ago. As we place it into the fire, let it burn brightly and remind us how truly our flag represents our country. Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Sasebo, Japan. At 8.46, the Sasebo Chief Petty Officer Selectees conducted a 9-11 Remembrance and Flag Retirement Ceremony in honor of those lost on September 11, 2001. At 8.58, Flight 175 takes a heading towards New York City. For many service members, including some of these selectees, the events of that day are what led them toward military service. The red stands for all the men and women who have died in the service of our country. I'm Chief Quartermaster Select Scott Frederick Lopez. Today I was part of the retirement ceremony for the flag. I cut the second stripe off, which stood for purity. I was in my sophomore year of high school. I remember watching the planes hit in the Tower 2 while, we, well, while I was in history class. Um, immediately afterwards, I went to the recruiting office and tried to join, but I was too young. Uh, so I had to come back next year. I enrolled into the debt program, and then I left on my senior year. As the last bell tolls, these sailors and their families will continue the legacy of honoring our flag and the memory of those lost 14 years ago. As we place it into the fire, let it burn brightly and remind us how truly our flag represents our country. Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Sasebo, Japan. Students at Sasebo Elementary have kicked off a new school year and a new face welcomed them on their first day. I am just so excited to be here in Sasebo and also to start a new school year. Uh, working with kids and working with our families and our staff is a joy of mine and I just love it. Mrs. Phipps introduced herself and new faculty members to students and parents, then led them in one of her favorite morning routines. The exercise routine I like to introduce to all of my schools is called Rightio Tyso. And you cannot do this exercise without a smile on your face. And kids start the day with a smile on their face, and of course they're going to enjoy their day afterwards. As Mrs. Phipps settles into her new position, students and teachers are ready to ring in another year of learning. 
Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Sasebo, Japan. I learned yesterday that the water in Sasebo Bay is actually colder in March than it is in January. Members of the CFAST community have gathered next to the harbor on a cool March morning. A member of the group, Petty Officer Brady Myers, explained what they intended to do. I'm about to jump into ice cold water for the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society. It's going to be chilly. And why would anybody want to do something like that? Why to support a good cause that supports us. The CFAST Navy Marine Corps Relief Society uses the Polar Plunge to inform the community that the active duty fund drive has started. The drive raises funds, which the NMCRS uses, to provide financial assistance to sailors and Marines. As these shivering volunteers dry off and warm up with some hot cocoa, the NMCRS will move forward with the active duty fund drive and work to keep sailors and Marines mission ready. Petty Officer Jeremy Graham, Fleet Activities, Salsabo, Japan.